Hi, my name is Gal Bezik, and I'm the 17-year-old kid who's going to try to convince you to listen to new music. Now, I know saying this doesn't really sound so hard. I mean, it's just like everything else in life. Sometimes you need to step out of your comfort zone, right? But why out of all the things that people experience and do, did I choose music? Well, the answer is pretty easy to understand, but pretty hard to explain. So I'll try to the best of my ability. Oh, wait, next slide. Yes. Okay, so how music shaped me. Music changed my life. It gave me confidence and opened my mind up to so many different new experiences. From idols and parquet chords, giving me all the tools I need to become a rebellious teen and one step closer to becoming an anarcho-communist with lines like, the best way to scare a Tory is to read and get rich, to collectivism and autonomy are not mutually exclusive, to also death grips and clipping, giving me an out to be cathartic yet genuine in times when all you need to do is scream, tachyon, oh shit, I'm feeling it, tachyon at the top of my lungs to forget whatever the heck I was worrying about, to Dorian Electra and JPEG Mafia teaching me how to be myself and not let anybody tell me that I can't be flamboyant or choosing the perfect song before going to a party. Even after all these examples, you still might be thinking to yourself, why music? Well, simply answered, music is the best. Thank you. No, I'm just kidding. But music is the best because of these three, uh, these three main attributes of it. Accessibility, diversity, and personality. I'll start with accessibility. Accessibility in music is amazing because today, each and every one of you can open your phones up and look up a song. Doesn't matter if it came out in the 60s or yesterday. If you told someone in the 80s that you had a device that could play Bach's orchestral suite number three, and right after you could play a song about a guy with rainbow hair screaming over poorly mixed 808s, are you dumb, stupid, or dumb? They're probably gonna call you crazy and then probably call the cops because of your obsession with guys with rainbow hair. If you want to find music other ways, you, there's so many passionate music reviewers online, such as The Needle Arm, better known as Anthony Fantano on YouTube, who would love to tell you that that very niche album is a 10 out of 10, and Lil Uzi Vert's Eternal Take is trash. Want to just press a button and find your music that way? Perfect. Most music streaming services, whether free or paid, offer a radio type of experience in which you can just choose a genre, sound, song, whatever, and the algorithm will just find songs related to it that you would probably like. Want to tell people that your music taste is way better than theirs because it's underground and they just wouldn't get it? Perfect, Instagram, Twitter, and Reddit are full of those people ready to die on a hill for their favorite artist. Don't believe me? Just say something bad about Kanye West or Taylor Swift on Twitter and prepare, your men prepare for your mentions to be filled of Kanye stands, telling you that your artist sucks and that Kanye is the GOAT. What is a stan? Well, Basically, it's just a super intense fan that will stop at nothing to defend their artist and will cancel yours just because they wanted to. But even, even after all that, all I wanted to say is basically, you can find whatever music you like. There is no limit. But what kind of music do you like? Well, that leads me on to my next point, diversity. Diversity in music is amazing because you can go from Drake's Hotline Bling, a mellow feel-good song about loss of feeling and heartbreak, to Death Grips is, you might think he loves you for your money, but I know what he really loves you for. It's your brand new leopard skin pillbox hat. An industrial electropunk song about loss of feeling and heartbreak. You might be wondering why I chose these two songs. Well, it's the correlation between them. Not only are the topics that they're talking about kind of similar, but also they reside in the same genre. This is amazing. Two completely different songs, different sound structure, different instrumentation, different basically everything, reside in the same genre, hip hop. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait, doesn't this go against the whole diversity thing? Well, no, because actually, this just shows the range music can have. I mean, if two songs so different can reside in the same genre, what limits are there? Diversity in music makes it so awesome because people have people experiences. And then those people probably make music. And probably the people that make music don't make the same type of music. So you get many examples of similar topics all over music, such as a country love song and a punk rock love song. And one of those you're gonna connect to way deeper than the other. 
not just because it slaps or it hits you right in the feels, but because you connect to it on a personal level. This leads me to the next point, personality. To me, music is the most personal of the arts. You, it's where bands, artists, and all types of musicians can express exactly what they're feeling through lyrics, instrumentation, soundscape, and atmosphere. This is why personality is so important, because everyone can find a song in which they personally relate to. If you've ever been at a party and listened to Billy Joel's Piano Man and not sung it at the top of your lungs with your friends, were you really at that party? If you've ever been brokenhearted and listened to Tyler the Creator's Igor and not cried dur during the 40 minutes of the album, were you really brokenhearted? Look, this is all to say that music has a personal connection to each person. And uh, this leads me to my next, to finally start my talk. I know, quite a long introduction. But I want to start this with a rhetorical question. Why didn't you want to listen to You Might Think He Loves You For Your Money, But I Know What He Really Loves You For, It's Your Brand New Leopard Skin Pillbox Hat? Is it because the title is intimidating? Or because Death Grips just sounds like an edgy band name created by some kid to sound cool? Or is it just because industrial electropunk sounds weird to you? Well, it might just be a combo of the three. Because I like to call these three judgments you make musical stigma. Musical stigma is basically when somebody has a prejudice or a judgment against an artist's song or album without even listening to it. This was exceptionally visible in the 80s, the peak of heavy metal and rock music. You couldn't go anywhere without listening to hearing the names ACDC or Guns N' Roses. And these bands, well, they did crazy stunts, they had crazy outfits, and they had a lot, and I mean a lot of groupies. The Christian part of America hated this, and they made movies and sermons saying that rock music is from the devil and that it corrupts your mind. This eventually led to a congressional hearing in which basically the PMRC said that rock music is bad. Uh, they had a lot of artists and a lot of people on both sides debating it and some politicians even called rock music outrageous filth and that if they could do, with, if they could do away with it uh, constitutionally, they would do it ASAP. Luckily, that didn't happen but we did receive this sticker, the parental advisory sticker. Probably most of you have seen this sticker. Now, this doesn't seem like such a harsh punishment, but having this sticker on your album meant it would sell less, it wouldn't be on the radio, and basically people would have a stigma against that certain album, judging a book by its cover at the exact same level. So a lot of artists protested this. My favorite is Frank Zappa. Who's Frank Zappa? Basically, just imagine like your funny uncle who you've always thought deep down was a hippie and then he never stopped being a hippie and he started to make amazing music. Yeah, that guy. Okay, so Frank Zappa's, personal, uh, Frank Zappa's protest was creating this album called Frank Zappa Meets the Mothers of Prevention. I know, title is amazing already, but my favorite part of this is the sticker that he put in the album. This is a direct parody to the parental advisory sticker in which the first line reads, this album contains material which a truly free society would neither fear nor suppress. But what does this all have to do with musical stigma? Well, basically, the PMRC, the Parents Association that started all this trouble, didn't really hate the music itself or the way that it sounded. They just hated everything around it. They judged it on the acts, the concerts, the everything else except on the music. Now, this stigma comes from somewhere. Uh, that somewhere is different for everyone, but I'm willing to bet my bottom dollar that some of it just comes from not knowing what that music is about. I'm going to assume that most of you haven't heard of industrial electropunk, yet you still refuse to give it a chance. Why? Well, it's probably because you think you know what you like, and chances are you think that nothing close to industrial electropunk is something that you would like. Now, it goes also both ways. I mean, if you tell an uh, indie boy, you know, a Tyler, the creator, Stan, oh, wait, not that guy, hey, this guy, yes, that um, you like Cardi B, they'll probably scoff at you the same way you did at Industrial Electropunk. But that doesn't mean it's bad. That just means that you could just expand your music taste. I mean, if you start listening to different types of music, 
you'll just expand your way of uh, your view of uh, your world view. I'm not saying to, that I have to be a gatekeeper or that you have to understand the intricacies of Radiohead's OK Computer to say that you even like indie music, but I'm saying that it'd be cool if you tried. Expanding your music taste expands your worldview, it expands your way of thinking, and it expands you personally, because as I said before, music is the most personal of the arts. I mean, it's way easier to judge someone by their favorite Kanye song than by, by their favorite Picasso painting. Thus, leading us to the end of this very, very long rant. What I want everyone to take away from this is why music is so cool. <laughs> I want people to think about the way that they listen to music and why they listen to music. I want them to think about what albums they like, what albums they don't like, and if they even like music at all. So what I want everybody to do is go on their favorite search engine, put best blank album, Fill that blank with whatever you like, click on the first link, open it, listen to it, and dive in head first because you never know if you don't try. Thank you.